Hello ladies and gentlemen, Javon here with Dysfunctional Films, and I am back with another tutorial. So I had the great opportunity to work with my good friend Emmanuel on another one of his dance videos. And uh, he was telling me the concept that, uh, and the story about it, and he said he wanted to have some Polaroid photos in it. I thought it would be a really great idea if we replace those photos with videos, because that's just not a thing that we see nowadays. So um, he was all for it, and we ended up doing it, I guess. No, that came out wrong. Anyway, moving on. Uh, I think it came out really well. So this is the shot we're going to create in this tutorial. If it would like to load. So basically he takes the photo on the shot and oh, what? What? That's a video on a photo. That is not a thing. That's not a thing that people do nowadays. I'm pretty sure it's not. So uh, this effect was really simple and it's not perfect as you can see. We have uh, some like edges at the bottom of the photo, but it's really simple and easy to do. It doesn't take too much. It takes a little bit of time uh, waiting for your computer to render and whatnot. But other than that, it's super easy. Uh, anyone can do it. My brothers can do it and they're uh, special. So moving on, uh, let's get started. So the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna wanna import the footage. Uh, I have two shots here that we are gonna use for this. One, that's gonna be the shot that we're gonna replace. And the second one being uh, the shot that is being replaced with. Anyway, moving on. So we're gonna take our photo footage, that's the one we wanna track. I'm gonna drag it to the new comp and it's gonna create a comp the size of a photo. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna scrub through, I'm gonna find a frame where I think I would like to start uh, my track. Uh, because it's down here, first off, it's not in the shot, it's out of focus and it's in, it's a lot of movement going on out there. Uh, so I chose the frame kind of where it's in focus and closer to the camera. Let's choose a solid frame 110. How does that look? That looks fine. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to the center and we're gonna find a frame in here that we kind of like something around here so let's just remember how far that is from the end and then we're just gonna extract it okay so the next thing we want to do is we're gonna get uh, a new composition and we're gonna make it a solid uh, uh, let's do nine let's do yeah let's do 960 by 960 uh, it has to be square and you'll see why in a second um, and we're gonna make this I don't know 500 frames doesn't need to be too long we'll hit OK and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a, I'm gonna drag my replacement shot into this sequence here. I'm gonna scale it down just so it fits the edges of the image. And uh, there you go. But uh, it's not terribly long. Let's create, let's actually slow this down because it's a pretty short shot. Um, let's just do 300. And there you go, I'm gonna offset it over here towards till all the way to the end. And what I'm actually gonna do is I'm create a new um, placeholder shot and I'm gonna call this no let's, let's call it placeholder. And I'm gonna hit okay and then that's just gonna fall right in underneath it. And I'm gonna disable this so that way when we're working we don't have to worry about the, the video at the moment. So that way we can work with a faster image uh, and we can kind of see the edges of our image even better with this. So this is, you don't have to do this step, but this is, uh, I recommend you do it just to make life easier for yourself. So now we're going to go back to the photo footage and we're going to actually drag our comp footage into here. And there we go. It's a square. That's good. We're going to turn it off and forget about it. Now we're going to select our photo footage shot and we're going to go to effect. No, we're going to go animation. Uh, track in Mocha AE. And uh, this will open up Mocha for After Effects. If you don't know what it is, it's a tracking program. Uh, I believe it's a planar tracking program. Um, so it tracks flat surfaces and it's ridiculously well. So I'm going to rename the project to 2 because I already have done this. I'm going to select the frame 110. Uh, I'll go straight to the end. I'm going to hit OK. Um, and there you go. So now it, you see it. The beginning is actually at frame 110, the one that we specified we want it to be the beginning of our shot. So these are the same exact frames. So the next thing you're going to want to do is you're going to you're going to have to track this. 
so we're gonna go to the center where it's closest and more most in focus into the camera and I'm gonna go with this this frame so now we're gonna select the busier tool and we're just gonna select uh, our four corners here it doesn't have to be perfect but if you want to be perfect you can be perfect uh, but uh, as my role model Miley Cyrus says uh, nobody's perfect okay that's she's not my role model but uh, she's she's right no one's perfect <laughs> no one's perfect. Although I'm pretty, I think I'm pretty close. Don't judge. All right, moving on. So once you've adjusted it to be, uh, it doesn't have to be perfect. Ugh, back to that again. Uh, what you're gonna do is you're gonna select this uh, blue thingy here, uh, and this is basically your surface. What surface do you want to track along? And we're gonna set it to the corners of our images because that's the perfect surface that we want to track. Um, and that looks like it's good. good. There you go. That's good. That looks right. And then we're gonna turn on this grid so that way we can see, make sure it's in line uh, with the blue thingy. And then what we're going to do is we're just gonna track forward. So this is a really long and boring process. Uh, you want to make sure you have per perspective turned on just in case. Um, and we're gonna set the minimum pixels used. We're gonna leave that 20 actually because that works fine. But if you want to be very precise, you can change that to 500 or actually I don't know how high it goes I think it goes all to 100 anyway 20 pixels is fine I usually do something something sometimes around 40 to 30 to 40 pixels but that's not important uh, so we're gonna track forward and I'll be back when it's done uh, it might get slower when it's tracking things that are out of focus which is ideally wrong when you want to film something like this you want to make sure you have your shots in focus so that way it's easier and makes tracking way better and you can get really precise with your tracks uh, when it goes out of focus like this it has to kind of guess um, if it's in the right position but it seems to be doing a really good job so uh, I'll be back after I've tracked the whole entire thing so my tracking just finished and uh, it looks like it tracked really well especially in the beginning because it's quite shaky the image but it did a really good job of staying on point and uh, I'm really impressed with the with this. So now the next step is we're gonna jump back into After Effects, uh, and we're gonna select our layer that we turned off. I'm gonna turn it back on, and we're gonna find the corner pin effect uh, and drag and drop, and then we're just gonna align these corners to their respective corners in this image. Uh, I'm gonna. Drop the transparency a bit, not too much. You can see that. And then I'm just going to select the corner pin effect here and try to align it to the best of my ability. Uh, that doesn't have to be perfect, um, which is weird because I'm a perfectionist and I'm saying, hey, nobody's perfect except for me. But uh, that's besides the point. So once you've got it to where you think it should be that looks right. Uh, I suggest when you do this, you actually have all four corners of your image in the shot, just to make it easy. But you know, I mean, and you have to make sure when you do this, you are on frame 110. If you're starting at the beginning of uh, your comp, perfect. If you do everything from the beginning of your comp, that's ideal. But because I, I'm stupid and I did it from center, I have to make sure I, I'm always working on the same frame. So now that I have it all synced up or whatever you want to call it, I'm going to turn my transparency back on. I'm going to Control shift c pre-compose this and move all attributes into the new composition make sure you have that selected we call this uh placeholder uh well track excuse my stupidity and um there we go so now that's in there so now what we're going to do is go back into mocha we're going to hit export tracking actually before we do that we actually make sure we are at the beginning and we have to align surface and that will push this to the corner and that's quite important because it's gonna use these corners to bend our image to um, make it look like it's tracked. So we're gonna do export tracking data. We're gonna make sure After Effects uh, corner pins support the motion blur selected. And we're gonna hit copy to clipboard. We're gonna go back into After Effects. We're gonna select our placeholder track, hit edit, paste. Boom, we are done. Look at that. Track, 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 track. Uh, and that's pretty much how you get this effect done. So it didn't track anything before that because I, I didn't tell it to work with those frames. Um, it's only working with everything from frame 110 and beyond.
So if you really want to do that, you would have to select set your range to uh, everything beyond from from frame zero to to eighty four. But I only said one ten and what because that's all I want. So what I, uh, what you might notice is that we have a bit of a problem, and that's this edges here. These edges are cut off, and the reason being is because um, it's all it really is doing is rotating our placeholder composition. Um, so you can see it's uh, slightly adjusting it, but it's rotating it so that way it looks like it's on flat on the uh, image. Um, the problem with that is. Uh, when I set it on frame 110, if I can get to it, I never had these corners in there, so it's not going to render them. Um, but what you can do is if you uh, open up the placeholder composition and go to composition settings, make sure it's locked aspect ratio. You can scale it up just enough so that way you have all four corners are in your image or even more than that. And if you go back into your original, you would see that you have them all back. There you go, beautiful. So now this isn't a perfect track. You can see there's edges under there. And if you really want, you can go in and fix that, but I could care less. Um, and all I'm going to do right now is I'm going to keyframe the transparency, the opacity. I hope no one's a big baby about that. It's opacity, not transparency. Anyway, and then I'm just going to track it all on, make sure it tracks along, and then it looks great. So now all I'm going to do is go back to the comp. I could turn back on my footage. And if I scrub through this, if I scrub through this, you should see that uh, the video tracks perfectly to the composition. Um, and that's basically all it is for this effect. This can be done to replace screens, uh, iPhone screens if you really like, uh, photo, um, and pretty much anything. You can even track the side of a car and replace or just track the side of a bus and replace the text on it. I did that before one of the projects. It was really cool. Um, but there's a lot of implications for this. It's a really simple effect, not too much work. Um, and for a shot like this, you would go through and uh, I guess just grab a fast blur and uh, keyframe how blurred it is. So zero. And here I would go to like nine or something just to make it look like it's actually shifting focus with the picture. So it that's pretty much all I really did for this effect. Um, it looks like it's almost backward, like a screen. It's kind of tricky. Um, but other than that, that's it's really simple. Make sure you turn motion blur on for both the placeholder track and your uh, uh, composition. And for like beginning motion, you can see there's motion blur. Uh, already in there again not perfect but if you want you can get real perfect with this amazing software easy to use uh, hope you enjoy the video uh, like comment subscribe and i'll see you next time